Hello, I'm Thomas with Geon Technologies, and welcome to the start of the Property Kind series, Property. Overall, this series focuses on building a control loop from a node to a waveform using three kinds of properties. In the node is a sawtooth signal generator device, and in the waveform is a simple controller component that will sweep through frequencies. The first two parts of this series focus on life cycle kinds, property and allocation, which is to say those that can be adjusted at initialization during runtime and those that indicate acquiring or reserving resources from a device. For example, when a device launches, it is provided with the first of those simple properties that are intended to be passed from the command line to the executable, followed by the rest of those of the kind, called property. Writable properties may be adjusted thereafter using the configure, allocate, and deallocate methods over the lifetime of the device. Similarly, a component may also see the configure method called multiple times over the course of its life. The third part of this series will look at using properties as asynchronous control words using the message kind. Before we get started, please take a moment to clone or download the code blocks repository on GitHub for this session. For this series on property kinds, you're provided with four Eclipse projects, a node, a signal generator device, a controller component, and the waveform. We'll be updating each of these throughout this video series. So first, we need to import the base projects into Eclipse. I'm bringing them all in, even though for this video we're really only touching the Sawtooth device. I recommend setting the copy into workspace flag so that you have all the originals handy in case something goes wrong. If you see a Java error during the import, it's safe to ignore it. The goal of this session is to update the signal generator device to have a runtime adjustable control parameter structure for adjusting the Sawtooth signal as the device operates. Let's get started by opening the Sawtooth device's SPD project file and navigating to the Properties tab. This device has been written to use a structure called control underscore params, which has two floats to describe the output signal, frequency, and amplitude. Add the struct and give it the ID control underscore params, all lowercase, as shown. The default kind of the property has already been chosen for us. This kind indicates the property can be set in the parent node or waveform preferences, if this were a component, or adjusted from the SCA Explorer, the IDE, or the Python Sandbox, assuming it's writable, of course. Since this is a structure, all properties within it are of the same kind. In this case, we'll add the two simple fields to the structure for amplitude and frequency, setting each to float. Provide a default value of zero if you'd like. Later, we'll be sandboxing this device by directly creating it with these properties set to other values. The first field is provided to you. For the second, right-click on the structure and choose Add Simple. Since we didn't specify a name for this struct or its fields, the ID will be used for its name in each case. We generate the code and open the Python implementation file. Towards the bottom is the getData method, which recreates the signal vector with given parameters if it's ever found to be none, deleted. Otherwise, it tries to output the segments of the signal with timestamps to emulate the signal generator behavior. Above this method is the end of the process method, which handles calling getData and pushing out a bulk IO signal with the SRI as appropriate. And finally, a short method for validating the provided frequencies to ensure the Nyquist is met. Let's take a moment to test our device using the Python sandbox to gain some exposure to the features in that shell. Later we'll repeat this exercise using the IDE sandbox. So with your terminal, navigate to the Sawtooth device folder in your Eclipse Red Hawk workspace and enter the Python shell. Next, import the Python sandbox SB from Aussie Utils. Launch the device using its relative SPD path. Pass in your control params initial configuration as well, set to amplitude of 10 and 500 Hz frequency. Note this is a map of property ID value pairs, not a list.
Create a line plot and connect the device to it. Start the sandbox. This effectively calls start on the device and the plot. Next, let's use the configure method to update our control params amplitude property. Notice you must specify all fields in the struct property so we reiterate the 500 Hz frequency here. Of course, nothing happens because we didn't add any code to watch for the property to change. So let's stop the sandbox and do that now. Back in the Python implementation, paste the block 1 over the end of the constructor method. By the time the device reaches the constructor method, all property properties have been set once. So here we'll add the property change listener referencing the control params changed method. Then below the constructor, we have this new callback method that validates the frequency field sets the property, and clears the signal data. This will cause the next get data to rebuild the signal using these new parameters. Save these changes. This time we'll test our changes using the IDE sandbox. To do that, we need to deploy the device by dragging the project to the target SDR, then expand it to reveal the device. Right-click on the device and choose Launch in Sandbox Advanced. This will let us choose our initial property configuration as before, amplitude 10 and 500 Hz. We can also set the auto start flag so that the device automatically starts. Press finish. Expand the sandbox if it isn't automatically done so, device manager, and our sawtooth device. It should indicate that it has started. Right click on the data float out port and choose plot data. You should see a running sawtooth. Let's change our configuration by selecting the Properties tab and then our device. Set the amplitude to something else. I used 2 here. Press Enter. The plot should update and reflect the new amplitude. Shut down by closing the plot and releasing the device from the sandbox. You may see an error about how it failed to terminate, but it's probably fine. Just look at the output of the Console tab, typically indicating everything exited normally. An alternative way to do this test is to create a node project, add the sawtooth device, and deploy that to the target SDR. Then launch the node, start the device, and again plot its port. All of these steps can be performed from the IDE. That's it for this session, so let's review. As of Red Hawk 2.0, all properties can only be of one kind. Writable properties of the property kind can be set using the configure method. The configure method might be called many times over the life of the device or component. And finally, all properties in a component or device must have a unique ID. Thanks for watching. My name is Thomas with Geon Technologies. Please don't hesitate to contact us for more information and in-class training.